with, with what we're going to talk about today, the concept of wellness care, holistic care. And the book, we'll go start with page 143. I think you've got a couple questions here. Yep. I did. Uh, uh, I so can ask you after that. One, I'm sorry, I said 143. 113. 113. 113. Uh, when you finish your bottle of flora, which I did, you wait four months and then start it again? It kind of depends on your body. Sometimes people have been on a lot of antibiotics. Sometimes they need to go through maybe two or three bottles in a row. Oh, okay. If you have a strong immune system, I recommend you do about three or four bottles a year. Okay. So you skip a couple months and do it again. Okay, Once a quarter. A quarter. One a quarter. Yes. Yeah, so. You'll never, you'll never overdo it with okay. Flora Plus. It's always beneficial, okay? okay? Because it always strengthens the microbiome. That's what we talk about, the zoo and the gut. It helps, we talked about that yesterday. It helps maintain the friendly flora in the gut. And right now with all the, the flu and the stuff that's going around right now, I think that's very, very important for people to stay high on Flora Plus to get the keep keep the friend of flora in there because that is one of the main bases for a strong immune system. Now, if you if you're afraid of getting in the flu or you've had the flu, same thing. If you have had the flu and you're trying to recover, same thing. You go through the cycles of building the friend of flora. One thing about the viruses that they've hybrid this year, this past couple of years, they're meaner. They're meaner. They're tougher. So, if we do the if we do the graph on 100% healthy, which is nobody, and dead, which is dead is actually below zero. Because when you get down to here, zero, your body sucks energy out of the reserve. And your body has energy stored inside of you. And the fat, the muscles, blood, organs, siphons energy to help fill up your bucket. Now, in, in the book, there's this a section on the bucket. Yes, I want to talk about that because the bucket concept applies to you and everybody else. If the bucket is 82% full, that's where you have health. If it's down here, you're sick. If you're here, it's just not, not well. If it's 60 or 70, 75, you're, you're not well. A lot of people think they're healthy, they're not. They think they're here, they're here. A lot of people who are here, are here. They're above 25, somewhere between 60 and 25. And, they're, and those are the people that get sick. The ones that die are down here. Now, they, People say, you know, people are dying, they were never sick. The truth is, they had holes in the bucket and they were much lower than they thought they were. They were much lower than they thought they were. Now, any questions on what they just said? I don't have a question, I just had a comment. I was talking last night to an 11 year old girl who had, was at, had been to class and she said, you know, I think I'm right at about 50% and I'm not feeling too well. And I thought if she's placing herself already at that age at 50%, I wonder how far below that she actually is. But she's aware of it because she voluntarily said, I haven't been feeling too well. 
Yeah. Yeah. And she's 11. 11. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, when we talk about alternative health care, in my mind, wellness care is, should be, should be routine for everybody. In my mind, if we were taught health in school, we teach wellness principles and have them applied, like simple things like pressure, simple things like water, simple things like using the bathroom. Because I know, I know for a fact that a lot of young girls, they don't drink water because they don't want to have to go to the bathroom at school. I know my wife, if we're traveling, she will almost never use a public restroom unless she has to because the, of the because they're not clean. Yeah. She's very into being clean. So alternative in my mind, alternative care is what the, the care you get when you're in a crisis. So crisis. Crisis versus wellness, and and thank goodness we have good we have very good crisis care in the hospitals, but the hospital is a very dangerous dangerous place to be right now, if especially now. So again, the concepts that we talk about wellness care is applies to everybody, even if you're. Even if you're a strong believer in medicine, if you're a strong believer in, like I saw late a few minutes ago, it was on like eight or nine different drugs. She's in, but she says, I'm into wellness care. Well, she's kind of confused. She's kind of trying to do both, both. But if she has a severe crisis, I'd be the first one to send her, send her to get some short term focus care to help survive. Now, back to what do you believe? Which, is there a right or a wrong? My, my belief is on page 113, in the middle of the page. It says, belief of the truth is empowering. I got, and the greater the belief, the greater the power. When, now, when I read that, I highlighted it. Yes. So, what is the belief? I would like to see these words. The power that made your body is the power that heals the body. The more you believe that, the more power you have. The less you believe it, the less power you have. In chiropractic, there's a word called subluxation. Subluxation is a word that is used medically to define something less than a dislocation, something that's, in the lay term, way out of whack, way, way out of line. It's displaced, it's dislocated. Sub means less than completely dislocated. So that, that applies to a joint, that applies to a belief. And some people are told, you'll never be healthy unless you take this drug. You'll never be healthy unless you take, have this surgery done. You have no other choice. And the truth is, if you believe that, you reduce your own body's power to heal itself. And, and, and that's true. This concept could be used if you were to give a talk in church. A lot of people say that they believe in God, they believe in Christ, but they don't really believe that they were created in God's image. Last week when I talked about uh, re renewing your commitment to better health, and I made a list for you of some of the things that, that God has given to you to help you survive. 
if he weren't here last week, get one of these handouts so that you can read those things that God gave you, <coughs> God gave you to keep you alive, to help you survive. And when we talk about survive, that's what these people are doing down here. The people, the people that are down here, down here under 60%, they're surviving, but they're not healthy. To be healthy, you have to be up here, above 82%. Now, does it take work to stay up here? Yes, it takes conscious daily effort. I, I, on page 27 in the book, there's a picture of the triangle, the holy, the holistic triangle. And my recommendation is you, you become comfortable and familiar with the con that concept and that you keep going around and around around to try to keep your triangle equal. So you don't do fanatical things. You don't get hung up on, some people get hung up on the fact that if you have a positive mental attitude, you can, you can fix everything. If you have a strong belief system, you can fix everything. But that's not true. To, to fix everything, you, ha you have to do all three, three corners. You have to have the belief, you have to have the feeling, you have to have proper nourishment, you have to have proper elimination. I recently checked a lady who has one bowel movement a week. Wow. Wow. Now, you think you can be healthy with that? No. Not a, not a prayer. So, with that, with that, recycling of toxins because what happens in the in the bowel if you have toxins in there they get reabsorbed and go back in the middle to the liver if they don't go out they get recycled and we recycle garbage recycle garbage recycle garbage the level of the body goes down it, so that elimination becomes very important that one one little thing sometimes is a little thing like not drinking sufficient water because all, all cells need water to function. They need water to cleanse. If you think about a water molecule going into the body, it's like a little small dump truck. Someone asked me a couple of days ago uh, if they could do uh, if, they, if, if tea would work instead of water, well, when you have even a nutritious, healthy tea, the water molecules are partially loaded. So it's like sending a dump truck in with a part load. It can't bring as much toxin out. You want to put clean water in. And if you want to make water more powerful, you add a teeny bit of salt to give it a charge. That's what the, the real salt helps put the minerals in there, which helps charge the water. If, if you put too much, you've overloaded the, the water molecule. So you just want to barely taste it a little bit. In the morning, I do lemon water and real salt. Is that a good combination? That's a great combination. Okay. But again, how much lemon, how much salt? It's about a teaspoon of lemon and about a fourth teaspoon of salt and about, not a mug, but three-fourths of a mug or a half a mug of water. Or I water. don't know what a mug is. A coffee cup. So it's probably six ounces. Yeah, about six ounces, four to six ounces. How does it taste? Good. Then it's probably, probably good. So it's a good combination. Yeah, okay. I think that's a great combination. My only question would be, is it overloaded the molecules? Some people, again, like, some people like strong drinks. Some people like weak, weak drinks. Which is better? Weak. If you're trying to detoxify. Yeah. Weak, because you want to leave the molecules available to haul mm -hmm. stuff out. But there's also the option, like, I do salt water in the morning, um, and I make it so that it's, 
a mixture that tastes really good to me, but I also always follow it with pure, clean water. So even if there's the possibility that it's overloaded, it's like I'm drinking it at the same time, but it tastes one way right. rather than too diluted for me if I had as much water. That's a, that's a good thing to do. Yeah. But when you're trying to detox, do you use the detox tea? That's good for you, isn't it? The, the detox tea is... That's what I've been using. It's come, well, that, that's combined. The, the combined herbs <laughs> together to, to help intentionally mm -hmm cleanse. That's like, kind of like drinking soap. It washes out some of the, the, the toxins in the, in the kidneys and the bowels and the blood. Okay? But you don't want to just, if you only drink detox tea, it would not be a good thing. Yeah. Okay, now back to wellness care. And if we write down the word systems, with the idea of thinking of the different systems in the body, like the lungs, the kidneys, etc., and the word symptom, and put them on two extremes. The symptom is where you're, in my mind, treating a symptom is like, kind of like ch chasing rats around the cellar or mice. It's a single problem. It's a sing it probably has multiple causes. And, and if, if we were to talk about rodents, you can set traps. You can try to catch the, the you can try to solve the symptom by being very specific, or you can think more general and and think of the system. So if you, if I had mice in my garage. I would ask the question, wh why did they come in? Is there garbage? Is there, is there real food? Uh, you know, I did the food stories. Because if they come in, they come in, in because they smell something or they want to eat something. So, the, so from a system approach, you clean the organ. You, train, you do the whole, the whole deal. And that, that causes you to have a different approach than a symptom. So, I'll give a couple of examples of people who came to see me with a symptom. That was a number one concern. This week I saw a young man, 18 years old, who was a high school wrestler who came with a bad elbow and a bad shoulder. He said, that's my problem. And <clears throat> He had some, some in the neck, but mostly here. So I did a basic overall assessment, which included the walk of shame. So I had him walk down the hall, took a picture of him, and as he walked, he, he went down with his one hip, his arm swung different. So I knew that he had a system problem, and the system was his muscles, the system was his, the Bone, mis bone misalignment, which affected when you have bone misalignment, you have muscle misalignment, you also have decreased blood flow, decreased lymph flow, and a lot of pain because the nerves are aggravated. So I laid him down, checked his legs, his, his legs were not even. Now that's a simple test that anybody can do. You can lay on a bed and put your feet up and have somebody look at your heels. Your legs should be the same length. His weren't. So we did some work down on his pelvis. I showed him what to do at home because it's been that way for a long time. The shoulder, the shoulder's been bad for a long time. So for him to heal, it's going to take time. That's, that's the other downside about wellness care. Wellness care always takes more time to get up scale, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time to fill, to fill the bucket back up and to plug the holes. So I don't think he will be well for probably a few months, but the pain in his arm and shoulder 
might go away within a few days. But if it does not keep doing what, what he needs to do to correct the underlying system problems, it won't stay corrected. And that's a common, that's a common problem that well care practitioners like myself have to deal with is because people start to do something, the symptoms reduce, they think they're well, they're not. They haven't ha had a correction long enough in the system to make the tissue change, to regrow and be healthy. When I talk to you about teaching of old dog new tricks, yeah. we can't we can't teach old tissue to do new things. We have to teach. We have to protect the, the weak tissue, protect it by staying within tissue tolerance, and then train the new tissue. That's when I talk about we're training puppies. We're training the new tissue as it as it grows. Now, how long does it take new tissue to grow? Well, it depends. It depends on where the tissue is. If it's joint, joints take a long, long time. If it's blood, blood is very fast. And that's one thing. Good thing about the live blood analysis is you can do an analysis and you can see a problem. You can make a change in it within a short period of time. You can have a change in the, in the blood. If you have a change in the blood. You have a change in the nourishment, and when, when we enhance nourishment, wherever it is, we promote wellness, we promote rebuilding, we promote regrowth, and when we do that, the bucket fills up. I, I keep talking about the bucket because in my, in my mind, it's very easy to see the symptoms that come from holes in the bucket. And the holes can be mental, emotional. Sometimes sometimes that's, that's the main issue. Sometimes as people come and see me, they've, they've got you know, a bunch of kids, a couple of them are off track. They've had a marriage that's off track. They've had a couple of car accidents. They've had a couple of this. The other problems, so they end up having multiple holes in the bucket, and that, that becomes then a big job to keep checking and checking and checking. I call it assessment to, to keep assessing around the bucket to make sure that we fill, keep filling up the holes to fill up the, the, the body with energy. It's all about quality of energy. Now. And let me go back to the concept of what happens when people get sick. When people get have a problem and they're down here. I'll use my wife as an example. She had, and I talk about pain too. Pain, you, you cannot trust pain, first of all. Pain is a, uh, pain is a dirty dog. <laughs> pain is a lion. You can't depend on pain to determine the seriousness of the problem. My dad used to say, I can fix a headache with a hammer real easy. Put your thumb right there and I'll fix your headache for you. And, and you forget about your headache really quick when you have a smashed thumb. So <clears throat> people, again with my wife, back in February last year, she had developed a symptom that was significant. Now I knew she had a problem. And she had a problem for a long time with her gut. She had a lot of emotional stress that helped trigger the problem way in the past. And, but she developed a blockage in the bowel. Long story short, she had some blood tests. And the blood tests looked normal. The doctor said, you're healthy. No, doctor, I have pain right there. I said, I said to the doctor, no, we're here because I know she has a big problem. I know, I know because when I check her back, her back is tight in that area. And I can line up her back 
and within a couple of minutes that tightens back up. Now that's t to me a s proof that there's a, something in the front when the back misaligns for no structural reason. Okay? So I said we have a problem. So they said they did a CAT scan and they said had, had a tumor. They went and took the tumor out. All the focus was on the pain right there. What they didn't find, because they were only focused on the local pain, was the fact that she had another tumor over here, blocking the, the bowel going upward. So about three or four weeks later, this pain become now dominant. The thumb healed, <laughs> the headache came back. <laughs> so another CAT scan said, oh, we missed, yeah, you have another tumor. So they get the knife out, make a big cut, go in, take out that tumor, sew things back up, so you fix, your blood test is norm normal, go home and be happy. About 10 days later, very sick. We go in, blood test, normal. Now why are the bl blood tests normal? When, you bl when the blood, the blood, now this will probably scare you, but the blood, you can have good blood tests because the body always wants to keep the blood at certain ranges. This is why you wanted me to get a microscope again and do live blood again. That's exactly Because I would have found it like that. Exactly right. Yeah. That would have showed up very quickly. Anyway. Yeah. So they cut her open again and found that the surgery they did over here leaked. It was not sewn up right. Now, I'm going to put that story on pause and tell you another story quickly. <laughs> when, I had, when I had my stroke and heart attack way back in 2015, the, the heart doctor one day, in humility, said to me, when I asked him some questions that were hard questions for him, he said, I'm just a plumber. That's what I do. I just, I'm like a plumber. And I had, I had a stroke too. And my stroke affected my speech and my whole right arm. And, and when I took, Talk to the neurologist. The neurologist said, "Don't talk to me about your heart. I'm just I'm an electrician." So I told this heart doctor that, that, that what the electrician said, and I and I told the electrician what the heart doctor said about just being a plumber. So they had their own field of expertise, which thank goodness, thank goodness they did. But they did something wrong. I had my stroke on this side. But when I laid in intensive care, they put the needles in here. So I, I went seven days and could not use my right arm, which was not functional. I got on the neurologist. I said, you should have been smarter than that and put the needles over here. So and put me to work to try to rebuild, not the muscles. There's nothing wrong with the muscles. It was the brain. The brain had been damaged from the stroke. So I had to have new cells develop to run my hand again. Different cells, because the old dogs were dead. I had to have new, new tissue take over. Well, it took a long, long time. Both of them said to my wife, he's not coming home. Yeah, but I came home. I came home because I was not clear down here. I had a lot of reserve. And the reason I had reserve is because I was doing a lot of things right. <clears throat> Even though I was spending too much energy, not getting enough sleep, my body was low, I was eating good, had good muscle, had good reserve. And I think that's most of the reason I survived. I also think that my wife has connections above that said, I don't let him go, I need him. So I, I, I'm still around. 
and now I was telling you the story about my wife. She, the day after Thanksgiving, this last year, she got very sick. You didn't say the third surgery. Oh, that's, she had been leaking. Oh yes, she had been she had been leaking for ten days. They they cut her open and washed her out. The sur surgeon told me I think it said seven or eight quarts of water to wash things out, and then they tuck them all back in and sewed up the best they could. So she's way down the low, she, and she spent most of the summer down with the, you know, trying to survive uh, because they thought she was going to die too at that point, um, except the blood tests were good. <laughs> oh, wow. And, so this summer she's been low. Well, the day after Thanksgiving, she, because she's low, she comes down with COVID. And she got very, very, very sick. So she went three weeks with no food, none, she, none at all. And she spent four nights in bed with zero energy. And I monitored her closely because I I didn't want her to die but if she was not going to be healthy I didn't want her to suffer and she was suffering very low so for four nights three or four nights in a row her oxygen level was very very low if I had taken her to the hospital she would have died I know that I would have kept her she would have died but she did. So she then started to get well, and now she is downstairs sewing. So we're <laughs> back to normal to standard operating procedure. <laughs> but she says she has to move slow because her lungs are back where they should be. Her pulse ox is still a little bit low, but with all, and I give her. <laughs> A handful of nourishment twice a day to nourish your body. She's very good. Uh, her mind is very positive, and she believes totally in the power that made her body can heal her body. And if I would have tried to take her to the hospital, she would have probably killed me. Fighting <laughs> <laughs> to not go because she knew if she wanted, she would not come back home. And I, in fact, I have a couple of friends who are medical doctors, and I told them what, what the case was, and they said, I wouldn't take her either. It's too, it's a too dangerous place. So, so I know that you know that I have a lot of belief in the body. And have, a, in order to believe and practice what we do, it takes a lot of patience, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of focus. That's why on this handout, I listed the things that if you're, if you're going to be healthy, the choice is up to you to keep filling up the bucket because we have so much stress in the world of all kinds. Uh, when I talk about... Well, the Lord's give us the tools, you know, tolerance, patience, and apply them when we should and on, on ourselves. And he's given us a body that's in whose image? Yes. Is it just on the outer part? You just look like God? Or is it on the inner part? Your mechanisms that are inside of you, they're the same, they're in the image of God. Now, we have, we have problems. We have a, what I call the three M's. And the big problems. We, we have manufacturers of false concepts. We have manufacturers of false concepts. For example, and this was pointed out to me last week by one of the students we had, we were talking about non-believers. 
I'm not, I'm not opposed to vaccinations, just you know, but in our country, we, the CDC recommends we take an infant designed by God in the image of God with all of the pre-programs necessary to su survive and require 26 vaccination before 18 months. Now that's, in my, in my mind, that's total anti-God. It's anti-belief in the, what God made. That's, so right now we have manufacture of false ideas. We have marketers that market the false ideas. And where, where do you get exposed to the marketing of the false ideas? Media. The media. I think Trump was cool when he labeled it. You know, the fake news. The fake, <laughs> they talk about the word science. The, science. the word science is, in my mind, a joke because they, they lie. We don't get science, scientific information. Like the, the guy had talked to my class and said, there's no future uh, in my profession. He, he was honest. He said, that's the way it is. We have to help the people become stronger. We have to keep increasing, increasing them. So the, we have the manufacturers, we have the marketers, and we have the merchants. Who are the merchants of the false, the false falsehood, the things that make people sick? They're everywhere. They're every, if you go to a grocery store, you can walk up and down the aisles, you go to the checkout stand, you see all kinds of lies. Like you can or, or or truths. Like if you go to pick up a package of ground beef and on the front yeah, yeah. it says gluten free. Like it should have always been gluten free, mm -hmm. but it's a marketing tactic that oh Get this one because it doesn't have gluten in it. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. For Anne's money. That, that, that's good. Money. That's what it's about right now. Money, money and control. Money and control. You go to, to the grocery store and you see five hour energy marketed, marketed, marketed. Even professional athletes who are who know better it's a multi-billion dollar yeah, industry. Multi -billion. yeah. money's behind yeah, it and they're in great shape yeah. you know what well, except the ones who drop dead suddenly with no exactly. explanation yeah. if you want you find out if you want to track do a scientific study how old do how old do retired NFL players live before they die? And what's their health condition before they die? There's a lot of old athletes. There are a lot of, right now, in fact, my wife always tells me, did you read about the college athlete who died, the high school athlete who died, who just had a vaccination? They were healthy, quote, they were healthy. We have one at the place for BYU. They were playing. He was healthy, 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 and they had a heart problem. Now he's done for life. For life. So, but the, the good news is he's still alive. See, but even at that, once upon a time, I used to date a gold medal athlete. And what I saw behind the scenes was that his diet was atrocious. His mindset in everything except for his sport was atrocious. His sleeping habits were atrocious. And the second he retired from his sport, his health went immediately down the drain because that was the one good, like at least mental focus that he had. Yeah. He was out of my life by then, but I still saw it because it was quite public. <laughs> See, I, I, and I talked about it, Audrey, 
a few minutes ago. I will always, I will always believe that p part of the reason she lived through her last low, low, low spot a few weeks ago was because of her, her mindset, her, her belief, her belief <laughs> dragged her through the rat hole, so to speak, and and motivated her. And when we, when we visit about, you know, I ask her every day, so how are you, how are you doing? She's saying the words, you know, and getting better and better mm -hmm. every day. Now leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> every once in a while I say, no, tell me really. And yeah. she said, I'm doing better every time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, and I'm very proud of her because she's, she's a very good example of people who get very, very low and have the, and come back up. And she's doing it doing the things that we talk about in here all the time. Now, are there any questions on the concept that I talk about? I want to talk, if not, I want to add to what you just said, Deborah, about your friend. That's one of the reasons I recommend that you keep going around the triangle, that you keep assessing how, how am I doing in this area. That's why I gave you the, the handout a couple of weeks ago on uh, goal setting for 2022. If you think you're one of these, pick it up today. It gives you a, a chance to grade yourself. Of how am I doing? And real simple things like, what do I do to prepare for bed? How do I prepare to sleep? How long did it take, take me to get ready to go to bed? And then, et cetera, et cetera. You can go through that. But if you, if you went through this test one time a week, if, it, if you never graded yourself, if you just read the words in your conscious mind, that would change you the way the input data goes into the subconscious mind, and you would, you would do a few, a few more things, just a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And I know you I mentioned this before, last general conference, one of the brethren talked about the, the British biking team that were low in their Olympics. And he, as a coach said, we're gonna improve 1% here, 1% here, 1% here. We're gonna do it over and over. And it took him how long? I think it was about five or six years. And now they went from the bottom to the top because he incrementally improved. So, and sometimes it's simple things, simple, simple things. Like yesterday I had, had a lady who had it both in knees are placed. And she told me, I think one of them is crooked. It always feels like it's not right. <clears throat> and so I checked her really close and I agreed with her. I, you know, the surgeons do the best they can, but it was not quite straight. Now, she has a choice. Take it out, do it again, try to get it right this time, or slowly retrain her leg to adapt to, to normal. In order for her to do that, she has to do repetitive microtherapy over and over and over again. How long? Probably nine months to a year. If she's faithful, if she does that occasionally, it won't change. You have to be very diligent at doing the things you have to do. Commitment. Total commitment. Determination. You got it. That's what Michael was. That's <laughs> It's continue to do it every Sick. day. Yep, stick with it. Every day and every way you get a tiny bit better. So that's a, the general concept. Now, I, again, I want to tell you very clearly, I am not opposed to vaccination, but I am very opposed to what I call mass indiscriminate use of vaccination. And that's what they're doing with babies. And that's what they're trying to do 
with adults uh, right now. Math indiscriminate. And if, you, if your body's healthy, it, it will move you down to a lower level of hope. Regardless of whatever, you, regardless of which one it is. It's not gonna move you up, it's gonna move you down. And if you have enough, if you have enough reserve and enough focus, you, you can adapt and survive and overcome. Uh, we talk about the, the floor plus yeah. today. Yeah. You talked about some, we talked about that. that. The floor plus helps you overcome and strengthen your entire immune system. Your posture, again, your posture is critical for you. You gotta keep that heavy head in the middle. <clears throat> you can only do so much, though. You can only, you can do, only when, do it so much. When my husband sits there like this every day, I say, Glenn, sit up straight. You know? Did I not recommend you go to Cal Ranch? <laughs> if you go to Cal Ranch, they have little devices about this big. Water? <laughs> yeah, just, just, don't, don't, just don't say anything. Just walk over to him and... <laughs> Yes, I think so. I think you're here. So <laughs> my husband, just... my husband does the same thing. I see him and I'm like, "Will you please sit <laughs> up straight?" And he's like, "It's comfortable like this." That's exactly. And it's because it's broken down yeah. into that, and that is what feels yeah. most comfortable. Yeah. And you get out of that, you have to retrain, and it takes some conscious thought and effort. Yeah. Well, I got him going on the T zone, so hopefully, yeah. you know. Every, I just remind you, please every, sit up. Yep, every little bit helps. Your posture is really important. Thank you for, for being in. I appreciate your yeah. questions.